And then there was this hot pink word, love, and it was like sinking into the water. And I was like, Lord, what is this? What is, what is it? And uh, I felt like the Lord said that he is going to put his love inside of you in those places, those dark places that you don't want anybody to see. You don't want anybody to know about. You don't talk about it, but it's dark. It's, it's hurting. It's the stuff that uh, you don't really post about on Instagram, but it's happening. And then the Lord says, I'm going to start changing things from the inside out. I'm going to start, start bringing my love in. I'm going to start loving on you, and it's going to start changing from the inside out. So people may not recognize it right away, but you know something's going on on the inside, and so I believe that's happening. I've been praying a lot about it. Um, it's been over a year uh, since my wife and I, uh, well, since my wife conned me into getting a dog. Um, yeah, it's been a year. It's been a hard year, y'all. She's a good dog. She's a good dog. Leanna loves her. I like her. Um, she, always, she tries to get me to force it. She almost forces me. She's like, you know you love her. I'm like, babe, I'm not using that word. I'm not us- her, her, her name is Winnie. She is a miniature golden doodle. And uh, she is cute. She's a very cute dog. One time I was like, accidentally fell asleep on the, our little big giant beanbag we have. And she, like, she was like, opportune moment. And like snuggles in. And Leanna got a picture of it. And, uh, but exactly what I said was going to happen has happened. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, in the year that we have had her, she has not cleaned up poop outside one time. Um, I knew it was going to happen. The dog has vomited, diarrhea in the back of our nice car. Guess who has two thumbs and cleaned it up? This guy. Uh, it, the, 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 three, the three baths that she has had in the year that we've had her, uh, I, I've done two of them, and I assisted in one of them. Um, it, it's, it, you know, it's been a thing. It's exactly what I, what I said was going to happen. One time she got fleas. She got fleas, and it was like around the house we had to call an exterminator, and Leanna goes, who would have thought this would happen with a dog? I did. I knew this was going to happen with a dog because I had some dogs, and it happened with those dogs, and I knew it was going to happen. That's why I said no over and over again, but my wife is hot, and I can't say no to her very long. And so she conned me into it, and, and so that's been going on. To, to her, to her uh, just, just she, she, she was pregnant for the majority of that time, but now that she is not, she will go out in the cold, and she will pick up dog poop. Um, just kidding. I don't even go out in the cold and pick up dog food. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, so, so that's going on. She did clean up, throw up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That was a thing. I was, I was very happy about that. She also recently cleaned up diarrhea in the, in, the, in the front of the house because the dog got car sick. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about poop and throw up and everything like that, but I'm telling you, this is what it means to have a dog, people. This is what it is. This is the reality of doghood, of dog ownership, of dog fatherhood. I don't know. I don't want the dog father. I don't know. What, what, what is going on? What's going on with this? I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing. My wife is like, who knew that this is part of having a dog? I'm like, I did. So I tried to warn you. I tried to tell you. No dogs, but, but, but we got one. And there's, there's a lot of excitement that happens when you get a dog. You're like, oh, puppy, so cute. Oh my goodness. You know, it's like, <laughs> everybody's running around. And then I'm like, hey, child of mine, will you go feed the dog? <sighs> Yes. Hey, you need to go do this. Ah, uh, fine. That every everything that starts is like exciting, right? But but the real the real deal is is what happens as it continues. As you have to have that thing. It's like it's like everybody's like, "Woohoo! We got a baby!" Woo! They're like showing all the like 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 gender reveals. Like, Pff, it's pink. Woohoo! Everybody's all excited. Yeah, eighteen years, people. Yeah, 18 years. I love it. 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 It's amazing. I love it. I love it. I got four 18 years worth of goodness coming my way. I know. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, who, who remembers the transition from middle school to high school? Remember that? You're like, I'm finally done with middle school. I'm into high school. Yes. But you got four years of high school. You're like, you're like posting pictures, like, just got accepted into UNR. Woohoo! Like, I'm gonna go to TMC, I'm gonna get done. Da da da. Guess what? You got four years. Four years of college left. It's all exciting at the beginning. You, you get, you get, you make the team. You're looking at the list that I make the team. Your name's on the list. Yes! I made the team. 
Now you got to go to practice every day, stay up late doing homework. You got all this stuff going on. I mean, yes, I got the part for the play that I wanted. I got the part for the play. Woohoo! And now you got to be at rehearsal all the time and go over your lines and do all your stuff. Woo! The real passion, the real passion is not in the moment when it happens. The real passion is what happens afterwards, the continuous, continuous commitment. The continuous commitment. Last week, we had a lot of you. A lot of you came up, and, and, the, and God moved. God, God spoke to you. said, I want to follow Jesus. I'm going to choose to follow Jesus. You crossed the line. You made a choice, and you go, I want to follow Jesus. But then the question kind of rises, now what? Like, now what? There's, a, there's emotions that goes into it. There's goodness. There's, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But then you go, now, now what do you do? And the real passion of following Jesus is not in the moment. It's not in the emotion. It's not in that. The real passion of following Jesus is the lifelong journey of following Jesus. And so today, uh, I, I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach. But the fact is that I love Jesus like a lot with all my heart. And so when I talk, start talking about Jesus, I get excited. So if I stand up, Stephen, you just be ready. With the, like, they're filming. If you guys don't know, you can catch all the replays on, on podcasts and on YouTube. We put them up there so you can go back and watch them and listen to them. But if I stand up, Stephen, you just be ready because I get excited talking about Jesus. And let me tell you guys something. You should be excited hearing about Jesus. And sometimes, sometimes when, when, when I say something that really just hits you, you just need to say it. Don't be like, that hit me. I mean, you could. That'd be good. That'd be good. I'd be like, that hit me. That should be a new thing we should start in churchdom. They'd be like, be like, yes, and God loves you. Woo, that hit me. Mm, that hit me. So let's try that. One, two, three. Oh, she added the mm. Okay, I like the mm. Okay, it's going to be one, two, three. Mm, that hit me. One, two, three. I like it. I like it. I like it. Engaging with what God is doing is important. So I'm going to teach you guys. So, so here's a couple things. Who's this for? Number one, if you recently accepted Jesus, you recently chose to follow Jesus, and you're wondering, now what do I do? This is for you. This is for you. If, if you have gotten stuck in the routine of church, and maybe you kind of forgot why we go to church. People, I have been going to church longer than some of you have been alive. And let me tell you. Are you 27? I'm just throwing it out there. You said doubt it. I'm like, I've been saved for 27 years. So, you know, you know, I've been going to church for 27 years. And I know what it's like to get caught in a rut to just, you just do the thing because you know it's the thing to do. But sometimes you forget why you're going. And so hopefully this will remind you of what that is. Uh, if you don't know Jesus and are wondering what is following Jesus about what is being a Christian, what, what is that? This, this is for you. Uh, maybe you've accepted Jesus. You raise your hand, but there's still a gaping hole. You're like, it didn't, it didn't fix it. It didn't work. I thought it was going to work. It didn't fix it. You go through day-to-day -day life, and you're just like, man, there's got to be something more, and you're still trying stuff. It didn't fix it. There's something wrong with your day-to-day -day relationship with Jesus, and so this is going to be for you, so I'm going to talk to you guys. I'm going to teach you guys a little. You guys okay with that? Can you focus? Can you focus? I'm just checking to see if you're focused. I'm just checking to see if you're focused. Does anybody know what focus looks like? St no, it doesn't. No, that's when you're texting. You don't want your teacher to know. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> Especially when you had T9 texting and you had to know it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You had to know your buttons real good. Okay, okay. So, oh, you're like, T9? What is that? Is that a rapper? Um, so, to be a Christian, the word Christian in Latin, that last part, I-A-N, E-N, actually to means, means to be in the party of. Meaning, when you go to a restaurant, if we all went to the restaurant, they'd be like, Joshua, party of 50, party of whatever, right? But we go to a restaurant. You are in my party. Y yes, you are Joshuaans. 
And so, and so Christian means that you are in the party of, you are a part of. It also means that you are an imitator of, that, that you look at this person, you're like, I want to follow that, I want to do that, I'm going to imitate what this person does. And so when people look at you, they should go, oh, they're a Christian. How do you know that? I can tell by what they do. That's what being a Christian, I can tell by what they are doing. They are a follower of Christ. That's what Christian means. Now, back when Facebook was, was, was a cool thing and, and, and it first started, people, people would be like, oh, you get your profile all set up, right? You get your profile set up. And it would say, what religion? People were like, Christian. And it put a cross next to it and, and all this kind of stuff. Being a Christian was never meant to be a profile indicator. Being a Christian was never meant to be somebody who, who wore a cross as a necklace. Being a Christian was never meant to be somebody who had a WWJD bracelet. No, being a Christian was never meant to be Jesus is my homeboy. And it's like, that was, that was never what it was. It was Jesus is the one that I follow. He's the one I imitate. He's who I act like. And if you see me, then you know exactly what Jesus looks like. Or you can tell that I'm heading in that direction. That's what being a Christian, a follower of Christ, of the party of Christ is. And so I want to tell you today, what does that look like in everyday life? What does it look like to be a Christian in everyday life? What does it mean? And so I want you to grab something to take notes with. You, you need to take notes. So you remember stuff better if you take notes. You can focus better if you're taking notes. And I'm just going to teach you, and I'm going to get a little passionate because I'm in love with Jesus, and he's amazing, and he saved my life, and, and I can't, I can't, I can't stop talking about him. And I just started working at Chick-fil-A. I quit Thrive. I told people about Jesus at Thrive, and then I went over to Chick-fil-A, and now I'm talking to people about Jesus at Chick-fil-A, and, and, and they're, they're, they're coming through the window, and I'm giving them Jesus through the, through the drive through window, and, and they don't even know it. I'm like, you think you just got some spicy chicken sandwich? No, you didn't. You got some spicy chicken sandwich and some hot Holy Spirit. It. That's what you did. You want some, you want some, some zesty, some zesty buffalo sauce. I got that. And I got some Jesus sauce. I got some Jesus sauce. Because I'm in love with Jesus and I can't help it. So number one, being a follower of Jesus. You say, yes, Jesus, I want to follow. What well, it means knowing Jesus. You dedicate your life to knowing Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus, to getting to know him. Why do we go to church? We go to church. You come to 418. We read our Bible. We pray. We read books. If you, if you don't read books about Jesus, I'm going to recommend read some books about Jesus. Get the YouVersion app and, and do some devotions through the YouVersion app about Jesus. Get to know Jesus. Get to know about Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. Getting to know about Jesus won't make you know Jesus. But it's impossible to know Jesus without getting to know about Jesus, okay? Reading about my wife won't help me get to know my wife. But as I get to know my wife, I will know more about my wife. So as you read your Bible, as you read books about Jesus, listen to podcasts, and just start filling yourself with stuff about, I got podcasts on my phone. You're like, but you're a pastor and you preach. I know. I listen to, to, to all these different people's podcasts and what they preach and what they, I listen to my own podcast. I listen to, I'm just like, Jesus, I got to get some more of you. I want to know more about you because as I know more about you, it helps me to get to know you. We come to church to get to know more about Jesus so we can get to know him. Knowing Jesus is about love. It's about love. It's, whew, it's about love. Uh, can we put up Ephesians 3, please? I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, like, like tripping about this verse. It says, I pray. This is Paul. He's talking to the church in Ephesus. He says, I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Next verse. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. It is impossible to have a deep relationship with somebody that you do not trust. My wife and, and, and I, we trust each other deeply. Colton, I trust him. Uh, ben, I tr- where's Dominic? Dominic, that's my boy. He's out there. Do I, tr- I trust him. We, we, we trust 
He says, oh, hey, Dominic. <laughs> All the leaders in here, I trust them. And so we have a strong relationship. It says Christ will make his home in your heart. It doesn't mean that when you first accept Jesus, he's not there. It means that as you trust him, God is building this house. He's like setting up residence. He's going into every part of every room, and he's taking over every part of your heart. He's going to make his home there as you trust him. Check this, and it says, I love this. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. Your roots will go down, not, not into his power, that's there too. Not, not into his, his grace, that's there too. But it goes down into his love. It goes down into his love. You guys, you guys ever see those trees, the trees, and they have like the two poles next to them, and there's the, 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 the wires attached to them. They're little trees, you know what I'm talking about? The reason why those are there is because the roots of that tree are not strong enough to keep the wind from knocking it down. So it's supported. So the roots have to go down farther and farther and farther into the soil so that it becomes strong enough to withstand the wind. Your problems in your life can only be withstood as you begin to trust God and let your roots go down in his love. He loves me. You begin to realize he, he, wait, wait, he loves me. You have to get to know him. How do you get to know anybody? You talk to them all the time. Not sometimes. Could you imagine if you talked to your friend only before you ate? You're just like, hey, what's up, pal? What's up, buddy? What's up? What's up, umbigo? And you're just like, like, when's the last time we talked? Uh, breakfast. When's the last time we talked? Um, lunch. You're like, hey, it's nice eating with you. And then you're just like done. That was never what it was intended. You talk to, you set aside time to just talk with God and listen to God. And you go through your day talking to God and listening to God. And as you do that, you begin to know, he begins to tell you, I love you. You begin to see God come through for you. You begin to see God do things that prove his love for you. You begin to read the Bible and it shows you that he says, when you walk through the fire, I will be there. I paid a price for you because I love you. And as it becomes a reality for you, your roots of your spiritual life go down deep in his love. And you are strong. And you can withstand every problem that comes your way. The reason why you see Christians, they're like coming to church, like, woohoo, we love Jesus. And then something wrong goes down. They're like, where'd so-and-so go? It's because their roots have not become strong in his love. They were strong in an emotion. They were strong in a moment. They were strong when everything was good. But because they didn't nurture that thing and let their roots go down into his love, that he loves them in the middle of everything, they faded away. Getting to know Jesus. Uh, verse 18. Verse 18, it says, it says, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep his love is. I love this because it says you have to actually have some power to understand how much he loves you. If you were to actually grasp it, it would knock you over. It would overwhelm you. It would be too much for you. You, you can't even understand the love of God for you. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it's too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete. The reason why you are walking around, you chose to accept Jesus, but you still feel like there was a hole in your heart is because you have not let your trust and your roots go down into his love. And when it does, it will make you complete. You'll stop caring about what people think about you when, it makes, when his love makes you complete. You'll stop worrying about how many friends you have, how many followers you have, how many people liked your, how many comments, who was the first comment. You'll stop worrying about all that stuff when you start going, I'm complete in his love. Because I have a relationship with God. He's not just a God that is just a church religion. He is my friend. He is my king. I love him. He loves me. And I am complete in that. But we keep looking for things to complete us, but it won't until you 
are complete in his love. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness and life and power that comes from God. You have to get to know Jesus as a friend, as a, as, as, as a best friend, as the one you go to and talk to about everything. You got to. It's what being a Christian is. And how do you, you just talk to him? You read the Bible. You get, you get your hands on everything you can to learn more about God and who he is. And you talk, 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 talk to him. You're like, but I can't see him. You can't see your friend when you're on the phone either. But it's the voice that lets you know you're there. What happens? You, and my wife, she'll be talking to me. I'm not much of an on-the-phone talker. She'll be talking to me, and I'm just listening. And she'll go, are you there? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm here. Because it's my voice that lets her know that I'm there. It's my voice. It's the voice of God that will tell you that he's there. But you have to be talking and listening. Talking and listening. And as you do, you will get to know him. Number two, following Jesus. It's about following Jesus. Being a Christian means you're a Christ follower. It means that you are trying to imitate him. You, you, you do what he says. You do what his leading is. See, the thing about before you follow Jesus, you follow yourself. You follow your own desires, what you want to do. And it always ends you up in a bad place. But we start to follow. Let, let, let's look at this. We start to follow Jesus. When we're following God's spirit, it brings healing. It brings anticipation for the future. It brings hope, love, direction. It gives clarity instead of confusion. And when we follow ourselves, it will lead to hurt. It will lead to disappointment, feeling unfulfilled, lacking, tired, purposeless, stressed, anxious, and trying to make everyone else happy when we do our own thing. Check this out. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, so I, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. This is, what, this is what that is. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants to do. Can we just be honest? How many of you have sins that you like to do? Thank you for being real. I do too. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. How many of you actually want to follow Jesus and do the right thing? So do I. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. They're co How many of you guys always feel like there's this battle on the inside, right or wrong? Right? Sometimes I watch you guys do it. You're literally in the moment. You're like, shh, stop talking. I'm trying to listen. So what'd you say? I mean, it's like literally in the moment. You're talking, and then you're like, shh. It's like, what is going on? There's a battle. Next verse. It says, but when you are directed by the Spirit, you're not under the obligation to the law of Moses. Next verse. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry. That's when we put things above God. Sorcery. I want to throw this out here real quick. That a lot of us are involved in sorcery and we don't even know it. All right? Some of us are like, ooh, what's my horoscope? And what we don't know is that is actually witchcraft and sorcery where you're trying to divine from nature what God wants to show you through his spirit. Horoscopes are when we are trying to get from our own means what God is trying to give you through your spirit. What's my future? What's my, what does my future have in store? We're looking in a, in a, a, online. What's my horoscope? Hmm. They don't know. But there's a God who made you, who knows exactly what he has planned for you, exactly the direction he wants for you. And he's saying, listen, don't look to a horoscope. Don't listen to these people, a psychic, a palm reader, all these different things. Don't look at that. Look to me. I will show you your direction. And I have a good plan for you and a good future for you. Sorcery, hostility, quarreling. Some of us, oh my goodness. It's like we cannot help but fight. We have an attitude with everybody. I have had people, I've had people tell me, I can't go, I, I, I would go to 14, but I can't because this person is there and I don't want them to argue, I don't want them to fight with me, I don't want them to say stuff about me. And I'm like, this should not be. As people who say they are followers of Jesus, 
Why are we arguing? Why are we fighting? Why are we hostile with each other? That is not the way of the spirit. That is the way of our flesh, and we need to cut it out. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. I just can't handle it. I'm yelling at this person. I'm yelling at this person. Uh, 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 I'm Snapchatting this person back, and I'm clapping back at this person. I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm yelling at this person. It's like, calm down. Calm down. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Selfish ambition, dissension. Oh, do you know what so-and-so said? Oh, snap. Okay, okay. Do you know what they said about you? Okay. Do you know what they said about you? Okay. She talking about all y'all. It's just just like we're just causing division between all these people. And God is like, stop it. Stop it. Verse 21. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and all these other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Just let that sink in for a second. Anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot step step into God's kingdom of peace when you are causing arguments and problems with people. He's not going to let you do it. Verse 24, if we jump to verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Not some parts, not the parts you want in every part of your life and what you watch and what you listen to and how you date and who you date and where you go to college and where you go to school and what sports you do and how you treat your parents, how you treat your friends, how you argue with somebody and whether you say sorry or not and, and, and emotions and relationships, all these different things in every area of your life that the Holy Spirit guides you. Following Jesus now, here's how this works. Some of you guys have, have, have pushed down the conviction and the prompting of the Holy Spirit for so long that you can't hear it anymore. You would feel the Holy Spirit go, don't do that. You'd be like, eh, I'm going to do it anyway. And what happens is we actually grow numb or callous to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and so we don't anymore. We don't hear it anymore. And so in this moment, just right now in your own, you can repent. You say, God, I'm sorry that I've pushed away your Holy Spirit, that I've stopped listening to you, and I want to be able to hear you again. Right in this moment, you can say sorry, you can repent, and you can have him come in and start telling you fresh and anew what it means to follow his Spirit. I and mean, here's what is going to happen. You're going to have these moments where the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you, and you're going to be like about to do something, and the Holy Spirit's going to go, uh-uh. Or you're going to have a moment where you think, I should do this, and you're going to go, I don't want to do that, and the Holy Spirit's going to go, do that. And you're going to feel it and you're going to know it's God because you're going to walk up to a leader and say, I think God told me to da-da-da. Let me tell you, the devil's not telling you to go and pray for people. The devil's not telling you to give money to the homeless. The devil's not telling you to obey your parents. The devil's not telling you to not gossip about people. The devil's not, let me tell you, if 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 it was the devil, it wouldn't sound like the right thing to do. Yes, it's God. Yes, go for it. And you listen and obey and he guides you. Number three, becoming like Jesus. Being a follower of Jesus means you are becoming like Jesus. Romans 8, 29, it says this. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. God's desire for everybody who chooses to follow Jesus is to become like Jesus. We're not robots. We don't all act the same. What it means is with your own unique personality that God has given you and your own unique giftings that God has given you, you use those the way Jesus would. Becoming like Jesus. That word has to do with like sculpting something. You ever have that thing, like, like you're in class, you, remember, you guys remember tracing when you were a kid? You put the tracing paper on there, and you're like, oh, yay. And you're like, you feel like the best drawer ever. You're like tracing, and you're like, look what I did, Mom. Well, yeah, but if you freehanded that, <laughs> you'd be jacked. 
Stop freehanding it. Stop freehanding it. Stop, stop living life the way you think Jesus would live it and come to the word of God and see how Jesus actually did live and just trace the picture, people. Just trace the picture. It's perfect. You can't go wrong when you trace the picture. To, to become like Jesus means we start thinking. like I wrote some stuff down. Jesus is not depressed. He's not anxious. He's not angry. He's not cussing out his teacher. He's not worried about the future. He doesn't have low self-esteem. That's who God wants you to be. Jesus speaks the truth. He speaks blessing over people. He doesn't gossip. He speaks in love. That's how God wants you to talk. Jesus loves. He forgives. He cares. He encourages. He heals. He sets people free. He works hard, and he works with excellence. That's how God wants you to live. And so what we do is we start going, okay, God, where am I not like you? Help me to become like you. How many of you guys have ever pulled weeds before? Exactly. Exactly. Here's, here's, here's it's like, you ever look, you, here's, here's the worst thing about it. It's, it's like they're literally like growing as you're pulling them. You're like, you're like, you're like, whoo, you got like this whole bag of weeds. You like stand up. You're like, ah, ah, you're like blistering. It's like bleeding. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, oh, my goodness, these gloves didn't even work. And then you turn around. You're like, ah, there's a whole bunch of weeds over here. And then you turn around. Ah, they just popped up where I just grew them, oh, where I just pulled them. It feels like that. It's like this. You have all these weeds. All these weeds, anger and, and confusion and, and jealousy and perversion and, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And God's going, I want to I take, take that out. I want to take it out. So anybody ever seen somebody with, like, those nice, luscious lawns? They're always, like, retired people. You know what I'm talking about? They're just, like, in their lawn. They're, like, he's, like, an old guy. He's got, like, shriveled up chest. But he's always out there without a shirt. And he's, like, He's got like short shorts on, and he's just like the sand, the, the the shoes that are all green and everything from the grass. He's just like, like bro, I don't know if you know this, but you're like wrinkly. <laughs> you should put a shirt on. And so he's just like, he's just like taking care of it. And then he goes and he sits back, and he's just like, he's just like drinking his lemonade. He's like, ah, uh, he's looking at his yard. It's like lush. There's like horses coming and grazing from the fields from the mountains. Like, oh my goodness, we have discovered the promised land. They're just like munching on his lawn. He's like, wow, look at this guy's yard. This guy, good job. But, but it takes work to get it like that. And becoming like Jesus is the Holy Spirit guiding you and saying, hey, that's not what Jesus would do. And you go, oh, forgive me. Help me next time to do what Jesus would do. Guys, we got to start living aware. We live lives with tunnel vision. We go into school, and we're just like this, time for school. Go to my locker. Go, hey, friend. Hello, friend. Go, next thing. Oh, next, huh. Oh, yeah, they are. They're stupid. I hate them. Okay, yeah, I know. They're stupid, too. They just said you were stupid. Okay, uh, mom, get off. Quit, quit talking to me like that, mom. I hate you. Mom, why are you blah, blah, blah. Why are you always telling me to clean my room? It's my room. I'll do what I want. You're invading my privacy. Mm. And you're just like, mm. you're just going through your life, and you're not even thinking about anything. And God's going, open up your eyes to the spirit. Open up your eyes to your spirit. Open up your eyes to who God wants you to be. And start going and say, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to go into school. And I want to be an imitator of Jesus. I want to be somebody who looks like Jesus. And so God, show me. Okay, I'm walking through the hallway now. God, what are you saying to me? What are you, what are you telling me? And God will start showing you things. And you'll start feeling God close to you. And you say, okay, God. I'm hanging out with this friend, and you guys are talking, you're laughing up, you're having a good time, but in the back of your head, you're kind of like, God, what do you want to do right now? What do you want to do right now? God may say, hey, pray for your friend. Or he may not say anything. He's just like, hey, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. And you go into class, and you're sitting, you're doing your work, and your teachers, and your friends, like, gabbing in your ear, and talking and talking, and you're like, shh, 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 stop it. And your teacher's like, you stop talking. You're like, yes. <laughs> It wasn't even me this time. And God goes, uh-uh. Shh. 
don't talk back. Don't talk back. You go, oh, okay, okay. That's what God wants me to do. Okay, 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 okay. God, help me next time just to, to, to bring my anger under control. And you just, God starts showing you. You're with your parents, and your parents are like, I thought I told you to take out the trash. And you did forget to take out the trash. And you're like, yeah, but I just, shh, 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 shh. Just honor your parents right now. Honor your parents right now. And as you begin to obey and become like Jesus, blessing comes in, and power comes in, and his love comes in, and his goodness comes in, and it just begins to change you. And all of a sudden, you begin to impact and affect people. I, I was... Uh, we had at, at Chick-fil-A where we were working everything, we had trainers come in. And then one of the trainers was leaving and she was giving people cards and she gave me a card. And I was reading it. She said, Josh, it only worked with me one day, but it really impacted me. She said, the way that you interact with guests is perfect. Keep that up. Now here's what I was doing. I wasn't trying to be good with the guests. I wasn't trying to have this guest. I love people because Jesus loves people and I want to be like Jesus and Jesus is joy and Jesus is peace and Jesus is goodness and I just let what he has worked inside of me come out because that's what it's about you getting to know Jesus you following Jesus and becoming like Jesus and as you do Jesus will guide you and lead you into the greatest adventure, the most fulfillment, the best life you have ever imagined. Because it's what he does, and it's what he always has had planned. This is what you do now. I'm going to leave you with this before we go into connect groups. How many of you guys know who Alexander the Great is? Alexander the Great, he was one of the greatest conquerors of all time, and and, and he was out there, and, and, and being a coward was a big deal. And so, so they're, they're, they're in a battle. And this young man, the story goes, is about 16 years old. And I don't know about you, but if I was going into battle, and I didn't have, like, like all kinds of armor, and they were coming at me to chop me up and whatnot, and I was like, oh, they got swords, and, like, that's going to hurt, and everything. Like, 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 I would probably run. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'd like to think that I would be brave and everything like that. But I don't know. I might be like this dude, and this dude ran. He was 16 years old. He was like, I'm out of here. And if you desert in the army, they will kill you. So they grab this boy, and Alexander the Great comes up to this 16-year-old boy who was a coward, who ran. And Alexander the Great said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Alexander. They have the same name. And Alexander said, hold up. Either change your name or change how you act. Because you have my name. So either change what you're going to call yourself, or you better start acting like somebody who has the name Alexander. God is saying, either change your name, or start following Jesus like a Christian. Don't put Christian on your profile if you're not going to do it. You know why people are making fun of Christians right now? You know why people are saying, oh, Christians this and prayer doesn't work and da-da-da. They're saying all this stuff about Christians. It's because Christians have not followed through with the name. It's time to stop. Time to stop playing games. If you're going to be a Christian and say you're a Christian, then do it. If you're not, then don't call yourself one. That seems harsh. You're making us look bad. There's people that need to get saved. There's people that need God to come in and change their lives. And if you're not going to be it, don't be calling yourself somebody who will.